ワールドバズチャンネル。はい、こんにちは。フジテレビアナウンサーの小沢洋子です。今回は？カナダ編です。<笑>はいで、今日はですね。あのスキル上、それでもというヒップホップの50周年を記念したイベント展覧会が行われるということで、そのオープニングに特別にお邪魔させていただくことになりました。大使館にすらねもう来ることがあまりないのでとってもワクワクしてます Hi, I'm Matt Fraser. Welcome to the Embassy of Canada in Tokyo. This year is the 50th anniversary of hip hop and to mark this important milestone we're hosting a group exhibition from Canada called Still Though. Hip hop consists of four elements rap, DJ, dance and graffiti. And our exhibition focuses especially on graffiti or street art. We invited some of the featured artists to join us for the opening. Thank you very much, World Buzz Channel, for interviewing them. Next, let's hear from those artists. やっぱりヒップホップっていうだけがあってこうパキッとした色が多い印象ですみずみさんです Why did you think to draw on the city? On the wall? I decided to do that because it felt to me that it was the most free version of art in a way It was outside of galleries, it was outside of the traditional art world, outside of the rules of art mm -hmm. that I was taught at the museums and everything. This is your work? Yes. Who is this? This is a friend of mine.、Um, she is part of a series that I have put in the streets, and it was in reaction in 2016 to a law that was passed in Quebec. That basically made it、uh, illegal for women, well, for anyone to. Wear a piece of clothing or jewelry or anything that was deemed ostentatious, too big to see,、uh, of their religion.、Um, so, anyone that had,、uh, like、uh, the Sikhs, if they had their scarves on their heads, Muslim women that covered their heads, it was, it was made illegal in public、um, official places. I am known to do work that,、uh, that portrays me naked, women naked, in A way to say that my body is just my body, and、um, if you sexualize me, that's your problem. A body is just a body. But I felt it was important for me, as someone that asks the freedom to be non sexualized with not wearing clothes, to stand,、uh, to stand with my sisters that decided to cover their hair for their personal beliefs. Again, it was a way for society to police women's bodies. Uh, without women's permission. It was society was deciding for women how to be in public. And so she is a woman that wears the hijab. And I put her along with other women that I know with the hijab in the streets with words that are feminist and Wonder Woman that is considered a feminist icon because I believe that feminism is not deciding on one way or another to be、uh, free as a woman. It's the, it's the choice, it's constantly giving. People, the educated choice, women, the educated choice that they're allowed to do whatever they want. That is feminism. It's not one way or another. I usually draw, that takes a little bit, but then I'll print it many, 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 many times. And I've put this image and all the other images from that, because I do series, so there's like four women in that series. And I've put it in a lot of places, in a lot of cities, dozens, if not hundreds of times. And they survive or not, they are seen, they are hated, they are loved, they have a life in themselves in the city. What, what is hip hop to you? It's a comment on our society. It's a culture that reflects parts of the society that has usually been shut down or ignored,、um, which is why it took traditionally a lot of illegal or non traditional ways to express itself. All paintings in the streets are here. Our energies, our statements, our proof of life of people and communities that are usually ignored and voices that are usually ignored.、Mm. Um, that is a big part of hip hop for me, and that's what I love about hip hop.、Mm. We 
had a great turnout today, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about um, people in Japan being interested in the work that we're doing. But why in Japan? Why in Japan? Oh my. Uh, <laughs> Japan has been, Tokyo has been one of the main places that hip hop arrived at when it oh. left New York City. Why did you think you, start, you wanted to start this project? So I wanted to start this project because um, when we think about hip hop, we don't think about all of the elements. We normally think about rappers and the music, but there's also the dancers and the DJs and the graffiti artists. And this is the hardest part to uh, preserve. So I run a hip hop archive, Northside Hip Hop Archive, and graffiti ends up on walls, um, but they're quickly cleaned off yeah. or they will diminish with the weather. Um, so we don't have archivally, and we don't have a lot of older, we don't preserve it really well. So I wanted to celebrate Canadian graffiti artists because they've contributed to hip hop history and many of their older pieces just don't exist anymore. What is hip hop to you? Um, that's a big question. To me, uh, hip hop is a lifestyle. It's a, a multi um, artistic uh, form. What I mean by that is it's visual, it's sonic, it's auditory, it's, you know, it's oral. Um, it touches all of your senses, right? So you have dance, you have break dancing, you have DJ, you have rapping. And to me, it's, it's a way of, of existing in the world, you know, uh, through creative expression, mm. thinking about how can you talk about issues in the world mm. that affect you, right? So for many of us, we live with racism, and hip hop is one of the great vehicles to help us talk about that to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. um, for others, it's about patriarchy and sexism, and hip hop becomes a vehicle that can help us spread awareness and open people's minds about things they're not aware of. In the 1980s, Canada was the first international stop where oh. artists would be performing on oh, stage. Oh. They would come to Toronto, they would be teenagers, and they would get on stages in Toronto and perform. And if they, if they didn't get booed off of the stage in Toronto, then they had a career. They could go to Europe and they could travel the rest of the oh. world. At the time in the 80s, we had a lot of young people that had just migrated from the Caribbean. So there was a, you know, strong audiences. There was good audiences to, to listen to the music and to like hip hop. So Toronto was an important stop on hip hop becoming a global entity. I'm always experimenting and trying new things as an artist. I think I rapped, you know what I mean? Um, I used to break dance. So I like to, I had a radio show, as I said, so I DJed for a bit. I did all the four elements of hip hop at some point in my life and I would change off and sometimes it was like I just needed to express myself differently. But I always went back to the artwork and visual arts, which is my first love. I really like that artwork. Can you show us? Yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> this is your work too. Yeah, these are my works as well. Um, it speaks to the New York City subway mm -hmm. where you know a lot of the graffiti came from. And being where we were in our city, we can paint on freight trains because we didn't have a subway system. Mm -hmm. So we would paint on freight trains and um, doing this piece here was just my expression on that. And um, the Canada Council of Arts bought this, these works for their permanent collection, the art bank. So now the, the, um, the permanent collection Council of Canadian Art own these works now. And that's the beauty of those works because it's not just on a one wall in a city, it moves. So you could see, people would see the work in Hawaii, yeah. in New York. LA so it moves all around right that's yeah. so cool yeah, so that's one but the beauty of seeing the freights go by when people are waiting in traffic you know when um there's rail crossing so the gates yeah. come down and people are waiting and they're watching and they're seeing all the beautiful oh. color right so as a young man that's what I like to watch all the colors and all the music. what message or thoughts you want to tell through this art you know it depends on the day and what's going on um, in what body of work you know mm -hmm. sometimes it's just to have fun but there's times where um, we had a situation happen in Ferguson in, 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 the, in the States where there was um, violence towards a black man from mm -hmm. the hands of the police. Yeah. So sometimes I'll express my, my art through that. And, and, and you know, so there's so many ways and so many different inspiration life gives us. I have five children and a wife. 
So sometimes I'm, you know, painting joyous things, you know, like, you know, so yeah, it really varies. I don't like to just have one message, you know, but elevate, which is the word that I utilize to write. It means elevation and, it, and it, that comes through meditation and spirituality and getting to our higher selves, you know, not dealing with just the materialism of life and the purchasing of things, but getting in tune with your inner self and trying to elevate yourself to the standard of your highest being. When I was at a really young age, I really got influenced by my, my big brother. He was really into all of the Public Enemy, uh, Ice Cube, all the, all the big artists at the time. And so he was a big influence on me. Um, and also through skateboarding, but it was also um, really into street fashion uh, in the 90s. And so that experience with just like the, the hip hop music side of things and then skateboarding with the fashion, um, that I merged that together. And that's kind of my own identity as hip hop. Um, I, I'm not probably the, the most traditional hip hop person. I'm more like hip hop is my own identity that I've created. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, I come under the whole big umbrella of hip hop, but for me, it's a very personal practice, and I try to emulate it, emulate that through my work. How do you want to express about your thoughts or message on your art? I'm not only an artist uh, as like a fine artist, but I'm also a curator of my own um, graffiti festival. So I would like to just express the whole um, the whole scene of graffiti within what I do, my practice as a curator. So I try to source out and find the best graffiti artists all over the world. And then we bring them to my city and then we do a showcase of uh, large scale mural work that they produce. And so for me, it's not just only expressing myself, but it's also expressing my peers. So it's also like showing the world all the styles of graffiti through this festival and then also giving them a platform for their careers to grow and develop. To, when I first came to Tokyo in 2004, um, there was a lot of graffiti everywhere. Uh, and there was a lot of international artists coming to Tokyo because um, it was a known playground to do graffiti. And so I thought it was just a place where it was accepted. But I think when the Olympics came, there was like more of a, uh, they, the city wanted to be a little bit more presentable to the international market, so they did clean the walls. And you know, being here this time as I'm older, I do appreciate the way how how everything's so clean and there's not so much graffiti everywhere. So I will say this: I like cities that have a lot of graffiti, and I like cities that don't have so much graffiti. Mm. So for me, <laughs> it's just about traveling to different areas. So I think it's okay, but I think you have to replace the bare walls with more public art. And so you can take away the graffiti, sure, but you also have to put some other type of legal street art yeah. in, in the city, uh. just to balance out the, the advertising and the, and the mundane, the boring walls. You still need color in the city. In a way, people still think wall art is really bad thing in Japan. 2023. Graffiti and street art has become so accepted on a worldwide scale. There's a lot of fashion brands, there's a lot of um, uh, commercial companies that use graffiti artists as their artists, but then graffiti artists get in trouble for doing on the street. So it's very confusing for somebody like me who does graffiti still that we're not allowed to do it on the street, but then everybody wants us to work for them. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult balance, mm -hmm. but I think, um, what the general public doesn't like to see is they don't like to see really messy graffiti. They don't like to see people that are just starting to do graffiti on the walls. I think when you're a really professional graffiti artist and you paint something, most people will like it. You know, if it's done really well and you don't get paint on the floor or on the walls anywhere and it's just really nice, people like that. But people don't like a chaotic looking um, <laughs> composition. So I think if I could tell my my peers or people that are just starting to graffiti, make sure you're really good if you're gonna do really public stuff. Practice a lot and then people will accept it more. When I first came to Japan, I was really surprised at how um, advanced the Japanese culture had accepted hip hop. So 20 years ago? Yeah, about 20 years ago. And um, I don't know, for me, like it's always been cutting edge with hip hop and street style. So I think Japan and you know, a lot of Asia is really pushing the limits for um, what, what's a possible with, with dance, with graffiti, with DJing. There's a lot of people that are really coming out of Asia that are really surprising the West. And I think Asia and Japan are 
definitely people to, to watch for expanding the growth of hip hop. They're really, really, really passionate about the culture and they're really hungry for it. And you can it, it really, even the dancers I saw today on stage, mm. the, the style and, and you can see their foundation and the love for the dance and it's, it's very inspiring. Mm. あの、主催しているマットさん。マットです。マットです。カナダが何て言うんですか、あの、これだけじゃなくてカナダはどういう国かなっていう感じですね。これを通して知ってもらいたい。さてこのチャンネルいいなと思ってくださった方はチャンネル登録よろしくお願いします。ニュースです。よいよい。